Learning chord inversions and their shapes is a really important way to get familiar with the keyboard and to get started playing chords in different ways. It's a fundamental part of learning to play and it's really useful for any style that you're learning. By the end of the video, you will understand what they are and how they work and you'll have the tools and the knowledge to figure out inversions for any chord. If we only ever played chords in the basic position you learned first, music would soon start to sound really bland. So being familiar with these gives us a lot more control to find ways to shape the sound of the music, sometimes bring out a melody note on top, recognize patterns when you read them or learn them, spot where notes you're using have actually come from and make sense of them and hear them easier as well. I'm also gonna clear up something later on that gets people mixed up sometimes because the word inversion gets used in two linked but very slightly different ways sometimes. This will make sense once I start explaining how they work. I'm also gonna do two more videos in this series after this one. This one's more about understanding them. The others are more about the practical side, learning to play them, practice them, recognize them easily and memorize them. Learning how they work is important first, but the aim in the long run is to be able to use them fluently. So make sure to come back to watch those when they're up. I've also got a PDF worksheet you can get, which is a nice clear recap of everything you need to know to understand inversions, as well as slash chords, because those two topics are slightly different, but there is a bit of crossover. You can get that from my website or there's a direct link in the description below. We're gonna use C major as an example first because it's clearest visually to start with chords that only have white notes in. Then later I'll show you how this works with other chords with black keys and other types of chords too. There's three notes in C major, C, E and G. And when you first learn a chord, you learn it in this default position. One of each note in order, starting with the root at the bottom. The root just being the note, that's the name of the chord. This is called root position. So we have the root, then the third, and then the fifth. E is three letters from C, making it a third, C, D, E. G is five letters from C, C, D, E, F, G, making it a fifth. There's a bit more to understand, so I've got a video up on how to build major and minor chords if any of that's new to you. There's a link for that in the description. If you play a G major chord in root position like this, then G is that chord's root, and we would start from there. So we had C, E, and G, but that's not the only way to play the chord. There's C's, E's, and G's across the whole piano. Really, you can play any combination of C's, E's, and G's, and it's gonna be some kind of C major chord. You're playing a chord voicing. Voicing just means how you play the chord, how you arrange the notes on the piano. So the main principle is you have a stream of the notes of this chord on the piano, of these C's, E's and G's in this case. You can play any configuration of those notes. And how you do that has a big impact on the sound of the music, the texture, the range and everything, but that's another topic really. Some things will obviously sound better than others, but you choose what suits the music essentially. Now there is a catch. To be a regular C major chord in this case, the note C, the root or the root of whatever chord you're on, has to be the lowest note you play or the dominant sounding note if you're playing some kind of pattern. I'm gonna come back to that because it has to do with the distinction that I mentioned. I wanna talk about the main useful thing you wanna learn first and that's the standard inversion shapes. So the inversion shapes that we need to practice are shapes where we can get the whole chord, one of each note, in a close together, not spread out position. We can reach these positions in one hand. There's three notes in this chord. That means there's three possible orders we could play the notes in like this. The first order, you already know, with the root on the bottom, root position. So like I said, we had the root, the third, and the fifth. If we take the low note though, and take it off the bottom and put it on the top. So we're just replacing this C with the next C up we have the next order. It's the same notes we started with, so it is the same chord still. This position is called first inversion because it's the first time we've inverted the shape. Now we have the third on the bottom, then the fifth, and then the root on the top. If we do that again, we take the new bottom note off and put that on the top. So we've just switched this E for that E. We still have the same notes. So it's still a C chord, just in another order again. This is called second inversion. Now the fifth is on the bottom, the root is in the middle, and the third is on the top. If we did that once more, take the new low note off the bottom, that G, and put it on top, we just get back to where we started, back to root position, only 
an octave above where we began. Remember, I'll be getting more into how to play these in the next video and I have some great methods for practicing them and recognizing them easily. So here's where I wanna make the distinction between how the word inversion is used before I show you these shapes on other chords. One is just a position or a shape or a voicing that you play typically in one hand, and the other is more to do with the overall harmony. So there may be something in your other hand that affects it or on another instrument. So if the first chord in a piece of music was a C, I might play a C in root position in my right hand, and then perhaps the root note C in my left hand. The chord is a C major. I could also play the right hand though in a first inversion like this, like we just talked about, but if I still play the note C in the bass, my right hand is playing the shape of a first inversion chord, what I call a first inversion shape, but the overall chord is not C major first inversion. It's just C major played differently in my right hand. The lowest note kind of wins the argument. I could play the notes from a C chord in any of those inversion shapes we learned or spread them out in any other which way. And if, if I had this C down here, the chord would overall would still really just be a C. Changing the bass note has a big impact on the sound as we tend to hear the notes up here in relation to the lowest note we play. Similarly, if I was just playing up here, but there was a bass player playing a low C, that would be true as well. Now remember the first inversion shape had the third on the bottom. If I move the bass note to the third of the chord, now the overall chord is a first inversion. If that third is down there in the bass, I can still play the notes from the C major chord any other which way up here, and the overall chord is still a first inversion. The second inversion shape had the fifth on the bottom, so if the fifth is the bass note, then the overall chord is a second inversion. However I play the chord up here. In a more modern context, we often actually call these slash chords. So first inversion would be C over E. The C chord is over the top of an E in the bass. Or the second inversion would be C over G. The C chord is over the top of a G in the bass. I have a whole video on slash chords you can watch as there's a lot more to learn with that terminology too. So in short, most of the time when people say inversion, they're talking about the shape or the way that you play a chord. I prefer to say inversion shape because I think it's clearer. And some of the time, particularly in a more classical setting, people are also referring to the overall chord where you might be playing one of the other notes other than the root as your bass note. Though a lot of the times these days people use slash chords to describe when the chord has a different bass note. I find that's usually clearer actually because it has a lot less limitations, you can go a lot further with that. Back to our shapes then, the thing you really need to grasp and practice first. I'm gonna do a few examples here of other chords to cement this idea for you, but I've also just launched a Patreon page where I'm gonna do a bunch more examples to help you learn. Everything you need to know will always be on YouTube, but I will be doing extended lessons with extra examples and things, extended guided practice sessions and other things like that. Patreon's a great way for me to give you that bit extra I can't on YouTube, so consider supporting me over there. Take a look at the page and see if that's something you wanna do. So let's do the same thing on a G major chord. Here's the root position. Take the bottom note off, put it on the top. There's G major first inversion, bottom note off, put it on the top. Second inversion, do the same thing once more, bottom note off, put it on the top, back to root position. Notice how because the original root position shape was the same as C, all the inversion shapes also look the, like the same shape as well. The root position shape is kind of evenly spread out. The first inversion shape has a bigger gap here. This is a third and then a fourth. And the second inversion shape is back to front to first. It has a fourth here and then a third here, a big gap and a smaller gap. Let's do a D minor chord. Root position is also the same looking shape as C, every other white note. But of course, this time the middle note is a minor third, not a major third. For the purposes of this though, we don't actually need to worry about that when we're just looking at the shapes. We can still just say third, it still helps us. We just really need to know what the notes are and then we can swap them around. So jumping to first inversion in the same way, bottom note on the top, looks like this. And then once more, that's first inversion, then once more, second inversion, and then do it again and we're back at root position. So all of these white note major and minor chords, plus this B diminished, all look like the same shape on the keyboard when you play root position. That means that the inversions are also gonna look and feel like the same shape under your fingers. When written properly, they'll also appear exactly the same on sheet music. 
They actually also appear as the same shape when those chords have black keys in as well because we just add sharps or flats to the same letters so those notes would be on the same position. This is actually also true of augmented and diminished chords because they also use roots, thirds and fifths, just different thirds and fifths. I'm going to get into that in more detail in actual reading videos. If we look at some major and minor chords that have some black notes in, the process is exactly the same but the shapes will just look slightly different on the keyboard. If we look at an E major, there's the three notes E, G sharp and B. It's a bit trickier to see visually with these chords. So with an E major, here's the root, the third and the fifth, E, G sharp and B. If we just take that E off and put it on the top, we now have E major in first inversion. So this looks a bit different because now the black key is on the bottom, but we've still got this fourth here and this third here. So it's still a big gap and a small gap. It just does look a little bit different. Now if we take the G sharp off, replace it with the one up here, we get the second inversion shape. And again, we've now got the fourth on the bottom and the third on the top. And once more, B off the bottom, back up there, and we're back at root position. G minor also has a black note in the middle, kind of like E major did. So this is going to look similar to that one. So G off the bottom, put it on the top. We get G minor in first inversion. Now let's take off the B flat here and put that on the top. G minor in second inversion. So again, this had the black note on the bottom just like first inversion of E did. And this second inversion of G minor has the black note on the top just like the second inversion of E major did. And take that bottom note off, put it on the top and we're back to where we started. So if two chords that start out with a black note in the middle like that, their inversion shapes are always gonna have the black note in the same spot in the middle, on the bottom, then on the top. The worksheet you can buy from my website as well as all the theory stuff includes graphics for every single major and minor chord inversion. The main important thing to remember is the process for figuring these out. So whether any of the notes are black or white, whether they're regular major minor chords or whether they're perhaps diminished chords with different kinds of thirds and fifths in, or if the chord is using different intervals other than thirds and fifths, so it might have a fourth in or a six or a seven, the process is the same. Get the original notes from the chord and just rearrange them in the different possible orders that they could go in. Even if you don't know the interval names, as long as you know the notes, you can still do it. The main thing you want to learn first are major and minor chords. Then you can also start learning your diminished and augmented and sus chords as well. It's worth doing this with seven chords, definitely. But beyond that, because of the way we tend to play these chords, it's not really worth doing it with any chords with more than four notes in. We'll just quickly look at a couple of different types of chords. And using this process, you can repeat this for any chord that you learn. So a sus4 chord is where we have a fourth instead of a third in the chord. So C sus4, we've got a root, a fourth, and a fifth. So here to here is a fourth. Um, so when we take this bottom note off and put it on the top and create a first inversion of C sus4, now we've got the fourth of the chord here, the fifth of the chord there, and the root on the top. If we do it one more time though, we put this F on top. Remember, it's exactly the same process. We now have a fifth here, the root in the middle and the fourth on top. Just another quick side note, you may notice that this is an F sus2 chord, but it's also an inversion of a C sus4 chord. If you had a C in the bass, it's C sus4. If you had an F in the bass, it's F sus2. So I'll do a C7 chord. So because we have four notes now, that means that there's four possible orders we could play the notes in. This is root position, the root's on the bottom. So we have the root, the third, the fifth, and then the seventh on top this time. Repeat the same process. Take the bottom note off, put it up there. Now we have first inversion of C7, third, the fifth, the seven, the root. Do it again, bottom note on the top. Now we have the fifth on the bottom, the seventh, the root, and the third on top. This is C7 second inversion but now we get the extra one. So if we do that one more time and put the G up there, we now have what we call third inversion. It's the third time you've inverted the chord. So this has the seventh of the chord on the bottom. I hope that was helpful. Remember to come back for the next videos to learn how to play them and practice them. Remember you can get that worksheet from my website and you can check out the extended examples video over on Patreon. Thanks for watching.